Hey, what's up, everybody? Mike Lindsley back with you. It is nine minutes with me from Rosie's Corner on a famous fish Friday, of course. Get it with your mac and cheese, coleslaw, french fries, and, of course, the pizza wings are always available for combinations from smalls to sheets. Uh, I would advise trying those garlic parm wings and the honey, uh, excuse me, the gold fever wings as well. You can get them hot. You can get them mild. Uh, just a terrific place to be here at Rosie's Corner. They have desserts, salads, Pepsi products out of the cooler, uh, as well, Rosie's Corner, a proud ML Sports Platter sponsor. And don't forget about the Meatball Bomber, the stuffed shells, the burgers, other great appetizers. They've got some awesome chip selections here uh, as well to go with your sandwiches, hot and cold subs, and a heck of a lot more here at Rosie's Corner. Get them on Facebook and Instagram as well. The New York Yankees, eh, are they back? Well, they're rolling right now. I, I'll, I'll give them that. And frankly, look, I didn't think that they had this in them, at least the amount of games. I thought that they would play better in the second half, would eventually make the playoffs. But to the tune of what they've done over the course of, what, a month and change, they have the best record in baseball since July 6th, just before uh, uh, you know, all of this, this big run happened, you know, the trade deadline, all that sort of thing. And, and there's a few things that I think you have to pinpoint here why the Yankees are, are back, why they've made up, what, double-digit games against the Red Sox in, in literally, you know, a matter of weeks. Uh, and, the you know, the A's are right there still. The Yankees lead the wild card by a game. They beat the Twins uh, in typical fashion last night. They always beat the Twins. Uh, you're always waiting for Minnesota to win. You're like, oh, it can't keep going, right? And then, and then it does. Um, but they're up a game on the wild card. Oakland and then of course a half game out of the second spot are the Boston Red Sox but there's a few things you have to point towards in the Yankee world as far as why they've come back and in and, and our playoff uh, contender here number one is the trades of Joey Gallo and Anthony Rizzo now listen I understand that Joey Gallo strikes out a ton and on occasion gives you the pop home run and that's about it but isn't that what a lot of Major League Baseball players do now is strike out a ton and hit home runs? I mean, that's, there's no difference there. For me, the Gallo addition is threefold. One, great guy in the clubhouse. Two, and these are in no order. Two, he just presents a different look. He's from the left side. The Yankees were just too right-handed uh, before. The lineup was too loaded on that side, too much power, too much right-handedness. Uh, and at least here, you've got somebody who's made for, God forbid, who knew that you needed left-handed power with a short porch at Yankee Stadium? Wow, who knew it took Brian Cashman this freaking long to go out and get power guys from the left side to hit it out? Uh, in that short porch area, but but area, but Gallo has also been phenomenal in the field, and I think that's something that just gets lost in today's baseball, where it's well, all he does is strike out and hit home run. Is all you? We'll go look at the game against the Red Sox. He made that unbelievable throw from the outfield. He can patrol left field. He can move him around. You can actually put him in right field a little bit as well. And then you get Anthony Rizzo, who's a championship player from a championship clubhouse of the Chicago Cubs in 2016. A guy who's classy. He gets it. He's fought a ton of adversity, battling back from cancer. And he's a great, great guy to have, not only in the locker room, uh, you know, but 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 just kind of like as an ambassador of the game. Um, <clears throat> he's terrific in that regard. And by the way, he's another lefty for the Yankees. Provides a different look. And he's spectacular at first base. He is a tremendous fielder. The second big thing for me, and, and again, all of these also are in no particular order, but this one might be the biggest one of all. And that is that the Yankees have stopped babying John Carlos Stanton forever and ever and ever again. You know, this guy was 30 million bucks a year. He's sitting his ass on the bench doing nothing. $30 million a year to just DH. Get him out in the field because, look, John Carlos Stanton blocks the roster in a lot of ways. And also blocks the pay you know the payroll right because now that he's on the payroll he can't go out and get you know multiple free agents you might want this and that they're still concerned about the luxury tax you he blocks the roster up until a certain point the Yankees not babying him allows so many different things to happen on the roster number one you don't DH Stanton that means that Luke Voigt can DH which means that without Luke Voigt at first Anthony Rizzo can play first base. And and while you're doing all that, 
you're presenting more balance and versatility as well. If you had to DH Stanton and you wanted to play Void at first, and I'm talking about most cases, of course, if you had to do that, well, where's Anthony Rizzo going to go? He'd be a pinch hitter later in the game. No, no, no. With Rizzo and Void in there, now you got the two righties, the two lefties, you know, back and forth. The lineup last night I actually really liked with Voit leading off against the Minnesota Twins. So when you don't baby John Carlos Stanton, you put him in the outfield, he can play left, he can play right, get him out there. I mean, make him play the outfield, therefore you don't block the roster as much. Voit's in the lineup, Rizzo's in the lineup. I like the lineup there with Gallo. You know, get Brett Gardner out of there, but get Gallo, get Rizzo, get Stanton, you know, all of Voight, they're all in there. And, and of course, DJ LeMahieu was playing at second base. And by the way, uh, Andrew Velasquez has been terrific as well. I mean, I, I think he should have been up here a long time ago. I'm going to talk to him and Tyler Wade. These two guys have been a difference-making pair for the New York Yankees. They're scrappy. They're hungry. They get after it. They work the count. Velasquez had a great game against the Red Sox the other night, multiple RBI game. And Tyler Wade has actually been playing some pretty darn good baseball, a guy who I wanted the Yankees to get the hell out of town a long time ago. He's proved me wrong. And he, by the way, he's another lefty at bat. So you have another guy who provides you a different look. He can hit for average, uh, and, and, and he's been spectacular in the field. You think about the play that Velasquez made to end the game the other night, the slide there uh, behind Odor. Fantastic. And Odor is another guy. You know, he provides a little bit of a jolt. He's, he's, he's no uh, uh, Stan Musial or anything like that, but the guy does provide some pop. And by the way, he's played a pretty darn good third base without uh, with, with, with having Gio Urshela missing. Labor Torres should be coming back soon, but I got to tell you, I like this Velasquez kid. I, I, I like riding the momentum here. Uh, and again, Torres is not a shortstop anyway. Uh, you know what? You give Void a day off. You put LeMahieu at first and maybe you slide Torres over to second, start to work that in. And the other big part of this season, turnaround for me for the New York Yankees, is Jamison Tyone. I give him a lot of credit. I rip Brian Cashman uh, for getting him and Corey Kluber and, 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 and literally counting on those guys to just be band-aids, right? These guys are damaged goods. The injuries are, are, are endless with both guys. I'm here to tell you that Jamison Tyone in the pitching rotation – with the up and down play, a, a, a pitching of, of multiple guys, Garrett Cole going out with the Corona, uh, Luis Severino ain't coming back, Corey Kluber got hurt, right? There's all these different things that are happening. I think he's provided a major jolt and a steady presence that has changed the rotation for the New York Yankees. So those are a few things for me that I've looked forward, uh, looked at, and I look forward to the rest of the season. I will tell you. The bullpen's a disaster. Chad Green was awful again last night. Him, Zach Britton, Araldus Chapman, uh, when he comes back, they're just you can't trust those guys. So uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be treading some uh, uh, some dangerous waters here for them uh, with that bullpen. It's funny how the, the 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 tide has turned, the tables have turned, right? Where uh, it was the bullpen as a strength. The bullpen is a strength. Just get to the bullpen. They got a sixth inning, a seventh inning, an eighth inning, a ninth inning guy. Well, now they don't. And so that's a big, big problem there. It's going to come down to what it always comes down to in the postseason. What is your ace going to do? Do you have starting pitching depth? What's your bullpen look like? And can you get big clutch hits with runners in scoring position? Those are the big four. We'll see what happens if they even make it. But right now, obviously, the Yanks are playing a lot better. I'm Mike Lindsley here, nine minutes with me from Rosie's Corner. Stop on down all day today for the Fish Friday. It goes great with the mac and cheese, the fries and coleslaw, pizza wing combinations. I told you the meatball bomber is to die for. Drinks and chips and desserts and salads all out of the cooler and uh, uh, on the counter and on the racks here at Rosie's. So make sure you stop by here for lunch and for dinner all day long. Rosie's Corner, a proud ML Sports Platter sponsor. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.